So it is 6.30 in the morning. And like I do every morning, I attempt to have a few moments of peace and quiet and enjoy a cup of coffee. And if you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But as I was scrolling through my phone, checking out the different alerts and things like that that come in over the night, something immediately caught my attention. Something that I had to investigate. I had to dig a little bit deeper. And as I continued to scroll through, I had the realization that I had to act. I had to act. I had to seize the moment because there were some really awesome books that were being identified in Key Collector app that I could not ignore. So I had to go into action. I had to figure out whether I had these books. I had to look for them. So I headed out to the garage to take on the challenge of hunting in the 100K collection. How did I do? All right, I'm back in the comic book room and ready to show you all some of the things that I managed to find in the 100K collection. And I think that there is some solid stuff that is sitting on the table in front of me. The very first book is Green Lantern Core Quarterly, uh, issue number one. And this is the first appearance of Jack T. Chance. And I managed to find a couple of copies of this spread throughout the Green Lantern bin. So a cool book. I've never read it, of course, because I'm not the biggest Green Lantern fan. But I, I will tell you, I'm intrigued by some of the covers. So there is a chance that I may end up reading some of what's in here. Uh, this next book is Green Lantern issue number 13. This is the first full appearance of a character known as Brick. At least I think that that is how you pronounce it. Definitely one of the challenge with uh, Green Lantern is uh, some of the, the names because of the alien races that are involved. Not always the best pronunciation on my part. Uh, next up, we have a Justice League issue number uh, 31, and this is the first appearance of Jessica Cruz. This is a book that I've actually found uh, a while ago, but I had it set aside in a bin um, definitely a cool book. This one I have read and I did enjoy this one. I actually have one of my favorite, a book from my favorite story arc from DC in the stack. And I'll show you all that in just a little bit. Next up, we have Green Lantern, uh, issue number 26. And I do believe that this is the first appearance of the Alpha Lanterns. And one thing I will tell you is so many of the Green Lantern covers look similar to me because there's just so much green and it just it just kind of they they all blend to me after a while. And after spending some time digging in these bins after a while, everything looked the same to me. Um, this next one is Tales of the Green Lantern core. And um, this is issue number two. And I think. I think, I think that this book is actually the one that is uh, written by Alan Moore. I do believe that there are a number of uh, first appearances in this one. Uh, but again, I think the, the Alan Moore writing on this one might be the, the important thing because I think that the foundation that was laid here was later picked up. But I want to say Jeff Johns and some things that he did a little bit later on that were pretty uh, well received by, by Green Lantern fans. Uh, so next up, we have Green Lantern issue number 217. And like some, some of the other books that I'll be showing you, this one too has uh, a lot of first appearances. And I think the more important one is Drick, which I think is this character right here. Uh, it is a Green Lantern that I was actually killed by Sinestro. And because of some kind of fluke with his ring was actually still alive, almost like uh, a zombie so you guys know I like um, vampires and zombies so I thought that that was a pretty interesting little tidbit so next up we have Green Lantern Core quarterly but this one is issue number six and this is the first appearance of Lariah Omoto I think that that's how you say her name I do believe she's from uh, like a, the Jade planet I want to say and, and I think she becomes important a little bit later in some other books that I'll, I'll be showing you all. So uh, Green Lantern Corps quarterly issue number six. All right, next up, we have Green Lantern issue number five. And I also will tell you, many of these books I found multiple copies of. And you'll see 
one book that I found a lot of copies of. Uh, Green Lantern issue number five right here. Uh, this is the first uh, Tomar 2. Tomar 2, I think that that's how you pronounce it. Definitely a cool cover. I kind of dig this one. I found, again, at least four copies of this one when I was digging around in the bins. Uh, next up, we have Tales of the Green Lantern Corps. And uh, I think what makes this one important, this is issue number one, I think what makes this one important is that it is the origin of the Green Lanterns and also of the Guardians. I'm not sure if it's retold, but I do believe that there is an origin story in this one. So definitely a cool cover right there. And again, I found multiple copies of that as I was digging around. Uh, next up are a couple of, of really cool books. They're, they're all mostly related. Uh, this is Green Lantern issue number 182. And this is where Jon Stewart becomes Green Lantern after Hal Jordan quits in issue number 182. So the issue right before this, uh, they, they quickly replaced him with some Jon Stewart action. And uh, Jon Stewart is not shy about uh, rushing into the fray. <laughs> this is issue number 183, where he is shoving uh, Hal to the side and, and rushing in. So this one uh, didn't really have too much significance other than I thought it was a cool cover. And I think the story is also by uh, Lynn Ween. Uh, next up, we have 185, Green Lantern 185. And this is the origin of Jon Stewart. Pretty cool book. I want to say I only found like two copies of this one in the collection uh, so far because you never know what else will be found. Uh, I found two copies of this one. Uh, this is Green Lantern issue number 188 and one might assume that this one is all about Jon Stewart but I believe that this is also the first appearance of Mogu, the living planet who is also a Green Lantern. So uh, cool cover right there. I have a, an affinity for yellow covers for, for some reason. Maybe it's just because I don't see them all that often that my eyes are just attracted to uh, the yellow covers. So next up, we have uh, Green Lantern issue number 201, and I want to say I maybe found six or seven copies of this one, and this is actually the first appearance of Kilowog, uh, and I do believe that Kilowog is actually confirmed to appear in the HBO Max series that is being done, so definitely a cool book. This is one when I was going through Key Collector app. I knew, I knew that I had this book in the collection because for whatever reason, this image was just, it was imprinted upon my mind when I was going through the collection before. Like I remember seeing this one and sure enough, went back and found multiple copies of that one. And I think at, in, in the raw form, that book actually goes for a couple of bucks, which is kind of cool. Uh, next up, we have a Green Lantern issue number 19. This is the first appearance of Yelena. Uh, Gore. I think that's how you say her name. I could be completely wrong and apologies if I butchered that. No need. No need to put uh, the phonetic spelling in the comment section. No need to do that. Uh, we know that I jacked it up and it's okay. <laughs> Next up we have, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this one. Um, this is Green Lantern issue number 20. Uh, and this, I do believe, is a uh, female Alpha Lantern, a powerful female Alpha Lantern. Again, not going to try to pronounce her name, but I do believe that that's her. Uh, this next one is one that I found uh, a couple of copies of this one over the years. And, and this is one that I had pulled out before, but I actually managed to find uh, two additional copies when I was hunting for it. Uh, I pulled one out before and then two more just recently. So this is Green Lantern issue number uh, 48. And this is the first appearance of Kyle Rayner, uh, who I do believe goes on to become the third Green Lantern. So definitely a cool book. Just definitely a cool cover as well. I've, I've always kind of dug that cover for whatever reason. There are a couple of covers out there you all know them that just I don't know they it's that one for me with Green Lantern and the one where he's wearing all the rings like those are two uh Green Lantern books that for whatever reason I whatever whenever I see them I I just associate that with Green Lantern uh so next up we have uh, Green Lantern issue number four. And uh, I think this one and the next one are some first appearances of some Green Lantern core teams. And again, 
I'm not going to try to pronounce the names. A couple of first appearances, if you will, in the form of this team, uh, the Green Lantern Corps. So uh, next up, we have, again, the same thing. This is Green Lantern issue number 12. And again, this, this is, a, I guess, a new team, a new configuration of the Green Lantern Corps, maybe a part of the core. I don't know how you explain it. The Green Lantern fans help me to understand how do you how do you characterize what I'm talking about? Uh, this is one that I've pulled to the side for, for a while, I have pulled to the side for a while. Uh, I have a bin of a lot of the free comic book day books that I've pulled from the 100K collection over the years. I just keep setting them to the side in one bin. And at some point, I may end up doing a video of just all the free comic book day books that have been found. Uh, but this one is the new 52 issue number one. And uh, this one is the first appearance of Simon Boz. I think that's how you say his last name. Um, cool Green Lantern. And this is his first appearance was in a free comic book day book. So kind of cool. Um, next up, uh, we have Justice League issue number 50. And this book is where Jessica Cruz becomes a Green Lantern. This book also happens to be part of my favorite DC story arc. I read The Dark Side War a couple of years ago and absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. I, I read most of this story arc in just a couple of sittings because I was just really captivated by this story arc. And so uh, when I read it, I immediately started setting all of these books to the side whenever I found them in the collection. So definitely a really cool book. Absolutely love that story arc. Uh, so there you go. Um, so while while I was going through the the feed for uh, Key Collector app, there was one book that jumped out at me that again, I knew, I knew that I had to have this book in the collection because I could picture in my head the bin that was labeled All-Star Squadron, right? So this is a bin that's mostly All-Star Squadron. I'm like, I know that I've seen that book. So I, I go, I find the bin and sure enough, sure enough, I was able to pull out uh all Star Squadron issue number 25. And this book has a ton of first appearances in it. I think it's um, the guy that goes on to become Adam Smasher. There is uh, Infinity Inc., I think, and there's a few other significant uh, things that happen in this book. Uh, but as I was digging in the bin, what I did not realize is that I had this many copies in the one at your K collection. I did not know. What is that? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 copies of All Star Squadron issue number 25 in the bin. None of the flaps are closed, so I'm going to have to close the flaps, but there you go. Uh, a really awesome find out of the 100K collection. Uh, no clue what I'm gonna do with these other than close the flat back up and probably drop them, most of them back in the All-Star Squadron bin that's downstairs. And uh, these are, I should probably note, just a mixture because you guys probably noticed, well, maybe you didn't, a mixture of direct and newsstand. These are all newsstand. Not sure if there's any price differential or value differential between the two, but just thought I would go ahead and let you all know that I noticed that because people will be like, did you know that there was a newsstand? While I was digging in the All-Star Squadron bin looking for issue number 25 because it relates to Green Lantern, I also found another really cool book. Um, number 47. Number 47 is the uh, origin of Dr. Fate. And it is also a Todd McFarlane cover. So definitely a cool book to have found. Uh, this, this, this pose here is one that I've seen on a few different uh, books related to Dr. Fate. So it, it's recognizable to me, but I don't know that I've really paid attention to this specific book when I went through that that all-star squadron bin a couple of years ago uh but a really cool book again the origin of dr fate doc uh what is that all-star squadron issue number 47 so uh there there are a couple of books that are missing some of the green lantern books that are in the collection i did not pull out 
Um, that would have taken even more time in addition to the time that it took me to find these books. Uh, but, but I do have, if you ever go back through that list on Key Collector app, you'll probably see a few that are missing. I have some of them, not all of them, certainly not the Silver Age Green Lantern or Golden Age Green Lantern. I have none of those books, unfortunately. Uh, maybe one day, maybe one day. Uh, but I do have one additional book that I will show you and it is a slab and, and it's a really cool book. This is one that I did not find in the 100K collection. I had to purchase this one. Uh, this is Green Lantern 87 and this is the first appearance of Jon Stewart. I have it in a 6.5. I want to say that I brought this from Crush Comics in Castro Valley. I think i think that that's where i bought this one but definitely a really cool book you guys have probably seen this on the wall behind me in various videos but definitely a really cool book i'd like to get uh some other green lantern keys especially silver age keys at some point so you never know you never know what could happen but uh i want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video this was definitely a fun challenge for me uh one of the cool things of of having a collection the size that i do is just going to hunt for these books to see if I can find them and then how many of them I can find, right? So I think I want to say honestly, this is probably the most books that I've pulled from a list of books in Key Collector app. And I'm not exactly surprised because the Green Lantern, Green Arrow section of the collection is pretty extensive. Like there are a lot of bins that are dedicated just to Green Lantern. So when I saw that list pop up on the phone, I was I was pretty excited because I felt like I should have a healthy number of these books. And sure enough. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I certainly want to encourage you to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I want to invite you to go ahead and do that as well. And as always, if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. Rolling, 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 rolling.